Good evening, everyone. It is 6 o'clock, so we will officially call the uh, July meeting of the Beaver Creek City Planning Commission to order. And we'll have a start with a roll call. Mr. Ayers? Here. Mr. Diker is absent. Mr. Loftus is absent. Mr. Meyer? Here. Mr. Self? Here. Uh, I need a motion to approve absences, please. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would uh, motion to approve Mr. Loftus and Mr. Mr. Diker's absences from today's meeting. Mr. Chair, I'd second. And we'll do that by general consensus. Thank you. Uh, and just as a, uh, an aside, since uh, our bylaws say that things must be carried by a, by a, um, the uh, council, sorry, by our entire five members, and since we only have three, things have to go 3-0 tonight to be approved, just so everyone will know. Okay. Um, uh, agenda, uh, any additions, corrections, changes, or are we good? We're good. We're good. Okay. Uh, move to approve. Mr. Chair, I move to approve the agenda. I'll second. And we'll do that by general consensus. Minutes from last month, any additions, corrections, changes, complaints? From May. We, we didn't meet last oh, month. Oh, that's right. That was a May meeting. Oh, yeah. How time flies. Sorry but, about that. This is the May 3rd meeting. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would uh, motion to approve the May 2023 Planning Commission uh, meeting minutes. Mr. Chair, I'll second. And we'll do that by general consensus. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, this evening we have two public hearings. Uh, since they are both for essentially the same development, uh, we're going to, to look at them uh, simultaneously. Uh, it is a public hearing. So the way we run our public hearings is that we will um, uh, have uh, our clerk read the, um, uh, the background information. We'll have a presentation by the applicant. Then we will have a um, uh, report by staff. Then we'll open it up to uh, comments. And once that is all done, we will discuss it amongst ourselves and hopefully take a vote. So without further ado, this is case number PUD 98-9, Amendment 6 of 23 and Mod 6 of 23. On an application filed by John Kopelchek, 3500 Pentagon Boulevard, Suite 500, Beaver Creek, Ohio, 45431. The applicant requests an amendment to revise the buffers within PUD 98-9 and requests specific site plan approval to allow for a 55,000 square foot expansion of the existing building located at 2685 Hibiscus Way. The property is further described as Book 1, page 10, parcel 108 on the Greene County Property Tax Atlas. I presume there is someone here for to make a presentation. Let us know what you have in mind. Hi there, Jared Barnett, 3500 Pentagon Boulevard uh, with Synergy. Um, here to talk about the uh, expansion in front of you tonight. Uh, Mr. Burkett has the, the site plan up there. Um, this is our College Park campus, um, and maybe an aerial, Randy, do you have an aerial in there? Might be helpful just to show kind of the overall. Um, but like, uh, <clears throat> you know, ho hopefully everybody's somewhat familiar with the space as we do. That's perfect right there. Um, so this is our College Park campus, and like a lot of our uh, office campuses in the area, um, really somewhat designed for expansion. Uh, in this case, expansion of an existing building. Uh, we had a lot of green space around the building with the star there on it, um, which back when it was built was called the ATIC building. Uh, tenants have changed over time, but again, we, we see a lot of see a lot of uh, defense interest in this area as things continue to grow at Wright Patterson Air Force Base. So, what we have proposed in front of you tonight is a two-story, 55,000 square foot total. Uh, expansion of that building essentially creating the additional parking uh, in the additional green space we had to accommodate that um, I, I I can go over more a lot of it's covered in the, the staff plan but uh, as far as their recommendations and uh, what they propose in the resolutions we're, we're on board with with their requests so I'll be here uh, maybe after mr. Burkett's oh we'll probably have questions for you thank you thank you Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission. I stated uh, this is two cases heard in one. Um, this is a college park, college park expansion project for the ATIC building, or what we've known as the ATIC building for the last 10, 12 years. Um, first, it's an amendment, uh, and amendments necessary for them to 
uh, get the minor mod that they're proposing as well. So they're kind of tied in together. Uh, what they're requesting again is an amendment of a 50 foot buffer that is south of the existing ATIC building to change that from a 50 foot buffer to a 50 foot building setback um, in order to construct that 50 to 5,000 square foot uh, addition along with the necessary parking, that uh, increase in parking they'll need with the addition. Uh, as noted, the project's in northern Beaver Creek. Uh, it's west of the mall at Fairfield Commons. It's about 1,300 feet south of the intersection of uh, Pentagon Boulevard and Hibiscus Way. Hibiscus is just to the east of that building that I've got uh, with the Green Star on it. And the Green Star building is the, uh, the building we're discussing here this evening. And this kind of gives a closer aerial of that building. Uh, you notice to the west is high density apartments, then to the southwest is high density uh, condominiums. To the um, south is high density residential, and then to the southeast is uh, in a professional office building and then to the east are some high density residential as well. And then obviously to the north is the uh, remainder of College Park, which has got uh, several office buildings and several thousand, hundred thousand square feet of office buildings. Uh, the property is within PUD 98-9, which is uh, Willow Creek, known as Willow Creek. It was rezoned back in the uh, late 90s and has gone through a few amendments over the years, one in 2002, one in 2007. Um, and those were dealt with setbacks. The, the particular one in 2007, there was a 50 foot building and, uh, or it was a 50 foot building and parking lot setback on the south of the side of ATIC and it was changed to just a 50 foot buffer. So what we're looking to do is reverse that change that was done in 2007. Because at the time, um, you know, it was, it was, we were unsure of exactly what type of residential would be directly to the south, whether it would be medium density or, or, or a high density that's, not quite as high as, high as the 13 dwelling units an acre that they built, but also because ATIC uh, at the time, they wanted that large landscape area because of security. And what they're proposing, and I'll get into a little further in a minute, but what they're proposing with this site is to do a security fence around a uh, majority of the parking lot to access that security. So it'll be a secured access parking lot. Um, so again, um, they're requesting a change from a 50 foot buffer to a 50 foot building setback. Um, they have no intention of relocating the bu any building any closer to that 50 foot. They just need it for the parking lot expansion that's needed for that 55,000 additional square foot of office space. Uh, on this map, it's kind of turned to the side. Uh, to the right is north. Um, that the double line is was the concept plan that was included in a 2007 rezoning. You see it says building and parking lot setback 50 feet. And it's essentially what, uh, I'm sorry, at the time it was uh, uh, just a um, building setback and then they changed it to a building and setback, park, a building and parking setback. And now we're looking to change it back to just a building setback with this amendment. Again, uh, for the major modification request, they're looking to construct an 83, uh, 55,000 square foot addition to an existing 83,000 square foot building. Uh, in order to do that addition, they're going to have to remove some parking where the building, the proposed building is located, but then they're going to add parking to the east and to the south, or to the west and the south of uh, the existing and proposed building. Uh, but the overall net increase will be 206 parking spaces, which you go through the calculations of what their office needs are and, and including their, they have an auditorium in the, in the existing building um, that they, with the 206 additional parking spaces, they do meet the requirements in the zoning code for parking. So say, seen here is the site plan. I think it's a little easier to see the version that I uh, kind of shaded in a little bit. The light orange uh, represents the existing building and then the darker orange represents the 55,000 square foot addition. Um, in terms of the secured parking, um, the red line around this represents where they're going to propose to put a, a six foot or seven foot decorative aluminum fence. So it's not going to be just a chain link fence. It's not going to be um, a wood fence or a vinyl fence or anything like that. It's going to be a decorative aluminum fence. And then they would have three access points to that. The two yellow are for, um, we'll have a gate with a, car read, a card reader to get in with your car. And then the orange one in the middle will be a pedestrian um, with a guard 
um, guard gate so that people can go in and out of that area. But everywhere you see in the red box will be considered secure parking, not open to the general public, uh, which is one of the reasons we felt comfortable having that go to the south of the existing building closer to the apartments because it's not just going to be all night every or all day every day anyone coming and going it's going to be people who actually have access to that parking lot so it won't be open to the general public uh, they're proposing to, to stick with the same access point on hibiscus way and continue they have multiple access points up into uh to College Park, so there's no change to the access to the site, just a reconfiguration of the parking so they can get that secured area um, out in front of the existing building and out in front and to the side of the, uh, the proposed uh, addition. Um, again, this to down is to the north, so the addition is, I got it, that's the additional area that they're proposing. And it'll be the same architectural features, the red brick and the, the, the brown brick and EFIS. And it, it's going to be a continuation of the existing building so that there'll be no discernible difference between the existing and the addition uh, should the addition be approved and, and constructed. Uh, it's got four-sided architectural features with no parent rear. Um, and so th there's no concerns with the, the overall look of the building and the architecture that they're proposing. It's such a seamless transition. The building will be connected by that one walkway. You can kind of see it between the existing building and the uh, future building. Um, and they did that so that there's not multiple connections into the new building, but one interior um, access point to the, to the new building. The landscape plan shows uh, abundant landscaping around the perimeter of the parking lot. Um, it'll be inside the security fence. Um, so the the on a, the entire actual property line is the, the seven foot decorative aluminum fence with the landscaping inside that fence. Um, one condition staff added uh, because these abut the the apartment to the south. Uh, I mean, you're talking 45 feet uh, or so from the parking lot. We wanted to include this area to be evergreen. This this shows some a lot of evergreen, but then some shrubs and some. Um, shade trees and bushes also but we wanted to emphasize that that be a solid row of evergreen trees a mixture of the three type of evergreens that they're proposing with their the original site so that it doesn't look completely off but we want to get that screen between the apartments and the uh, parking lot but again that'll all be secured by a fence so you won't have people parking in the parking lot walking into the into the uh, apartment buildings or, or or back and forth because there'll be no way to get through that unless it can scale a seven foot decorative fence with the sharp stuff on the very top. So um, uh, there's a lot of discouragement between uh, cross access between these two properties. A few of the mis miscellaneous conditions in your resolution for your consideration. One is that the uh, any mounting of any light fixture that's going to be south or east of the proposed addition, the south of the existing building or west of the proposed addition has to be 16 feet or lower. Uh, we do this when lighting abuts residential areas so that we can ensure that there's no spillover. I looked at a preliminary pho photometric plan and they had zero foot candles at the property line, which just means you won't get a shadow if you're, you're not standing on your property. Um, and they'll have to use full cutoff fixtures and also condition that uh, if they do close, uh, you know, I'm not sure if this is a 24 hour operation or not, but uh, if they do close, they have to reduce that parking to 25% lighting. Also uh, in consideration of the residential nearby, uh, the, the exterior uh, grading and exterior work on the building uh, is only Monday through Saturday, seven to seven. Uh, we do that in a lot of resident, uh, commercial abutting residential. Any area that's disturbed by grading, but then ultimately um, doesn't have construction on it. They, they're required within three months to plant appropriate ground cover, be grass or, or some uh, other form of ground cover. Just we do that. It's a boilerplate condition to make sure that you don't have areas of holding areas for, where somebody says, well, and not the synergy, I uh, would anticipate synergy doing it, but I've seen other projects where it's a holding area for a year or two and we don't want holding areas. Um, also, the major mod, there's a condition in the, in the major mod resolution that says if the amendment doesn't get passed for whatever reason, then this whole, the major mod is considered null and void. So that, because without that amendment, then, then they do, the parking does encroach into the, uh, the current buffer. 
And again, those little landscape plan have that final row of uh, evergreen trees along the southern property line. Um, both, uh, both resolutions in your uh, staff report uh, in your packet that today we uh, are recommending approval. Um, also, I want to point out just for procedure, you should have a, a one public comment for the amendment and then close that and then open a second public uh, comment for the uh, major mod and close that. So, uh, but again, staff recommends approval of both, uh, both requests of the applicant. I'll be here to answer any questions following the public hearings. Thank you. Our usual excellent report. Thank you, Randy. Um, since this is a public hearing, is there anyone here who wishes to speak in favor of, against, or simply have questions? see a serious lack of people uh, last chance did we get any written input no. no written input okay I will then officially close the public hearing and I will turn to my fellow commissioners I'll start on my left this time sir we wanted two public hearings, right? you're right okay we'll do it again anyone here who wishes that was for the amendment anyone here who wishes to speak for, against, or simply have questions about the major mod, which is the construction of the building. The amendment is to move the 50-foot uh, the foot buffer. Uh, so we're talking about now the actual major mod to the building. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak about that? Thank you for keeping me honest. I still see a lack of folks, so no, nothing written on that either. No. Okay, thank you very much. I'll close the second public hearing. Now I will turn to my fellow commissioners. Thank you, sir. Uh, staff, I have a question for staff. Yes, sir. So you mentioned it's a seven-foot aluminum decorative fence. Um, and, and when I think of decorative, I think, you know, an innocuous top, nothing's going to happen. And then you said something about there will be, um, I think you said, a feature at the top of the fence? If you see any of the uh, decorative aluminum fences out there, they've got sharp points at the top. I mean, it's, it's standard on most decorative aluminum fences. So I guess some of them might have a, a flat top, but ones I've seen. So no barbed wire? No barbed wire. It's just the, the standard arrow point to the top. And how does that jive with the rest of the neighborhood with the mall at Fairfield Commons and with the, the residential areas well I mean residential areas are allowed to have their their the fences if they want I mean generally decorative aluminum fences don't happen very often because they're expensive um, they're one of the more expensive options to uh, to provide a fence but they're one of the more sturdier options as well um, and I'm certain that uh, the reason they chose this is because of some regulations with the uh, what uh, with future occupants and, and requiring security rather than just just a, a solid wood you know privacy fence or something like that I mean the, the uh, decorative aluminum is you know the hardier yep. fence that we have out there I mean there's some in Beaver Creek, in the mall, I mean, that's far and few between. I can't think of any off the top of my head. Maybe the, um, maybe the Alzheimer's Care Center that's across the street. I think, they have I think the Clark, isn't there a decorative fence uh, around at least part of the Clark State? I believe, so. yeah, there's a half wall. Yeah, uh, half wall a half with a decorative wall aluminum, then, but yeah, along, on top Actually, that, you're right yeah. along Hibiscus uh, and, and along Pentagon. So it's a continuation of that from a... Okay. From the top of that part. Good. Um, and then, how, uh, how is there any thought or consideration to the what the impact will be on traffic for adding security points to get into the parking lot? That is definitely something that we had discussed. I mean, I I, I have plans if it becomes an issue. Uh, there are is on street parking on Hibiscus right now. So if that ever became an issue in terms of backup, um, we could turn the on-street parking into a diesel turn right turn lane um, but in speaking with the applicant on that you know it's just a matter of pulling in and the gate opens and you pull through I mean it's a matter of seconds that it takes to go through it's not it's not a long drawn-out process so 
you know, we're a, we'll keep an eye on it to see if it becomes a problem and the road's wide enough to give us an opportunity to, uh, to give some bypass is, if that is, if that becomes an issue. So is it, is it every person swipes their badge or will it stay open if people try to run the gate? I don't think it would stay open. Them? I mean, there wouldn't be, no, it would be one person, one, one car, one badge. So if it's eight o'clock in the morning, you get inundated with, with employees who are coming to work. It takes ten seconds for each person to get through the gate. There's sec <laughs> Whoa, <excuse me. laughs> there is second option for a gate up inside the property if you're coming coming from College Park parking lot, and there's also the pedestrian access too. So it's not the only access point. Did I turn that off? No. Um, it's not the only access point off of Hibiscus. So um, you know, I would anticipate. Drivers are going to know what they want to do in terms of if they decide they'd rather pull in through Co College Park because they think there's a line going to be on Hibiscus, they're going to find the easiest way for them as well. And, and again, we have that ability to uh, restripe the on-street parking for a couple hundred feet there on Hibiscus if it, if it became an issue. Okay, last question. W was it considered by the engineer? Or was it evaluated by the engineer? We did. I mean, he, sat, he, he reviewed all these plans. He didn't really have... Uh, any consider uh, any concern with backup just because because of the the quickness that you can get people through the gates and the multiple access points perfect thank you very much you're welcome i also had just one question on access um what about like for fire access like are they able to get in there and then like it looks like it could be quite tight for like a fire truck the fire truck that we did route these to the fire department they ran their templates to make sure that they could get in and out of the site so they were they were satisfied with the uh the turning radiuses and they'll have their own Review. master card to get in through okay. any one of the gates if they need it okay or master key card master key okay not master card <laughs> um, it only takes three seconds <laughs> i knew it was coming and then on the fence there is a diagram or a drawing of the fence on our second to last page of the packet is that the actual fence that'll be going in doing that's the unless they changed it okay. but that's that's the preliminary fence yeah with the, it's kind of hooked a little bit yeah there's no hook on this one but it's just flat at the top okay but, okay okay that's all my questions thank you don't run off sure um i was uh y'all covered the the stacking at the gate and having worked at Wright Pat for a few years uh, it can stack up mm -hmm. so uh, and I think we're kind of gun shy because of the um, the car wash there on um, CJ Drive because that does leak out into into CJ Drive uh, but I suspect that moves a little slower than than this would and this I mean yeah there'll be some staggered starts I mean it's not everybody coming in at eight I mean it's like many government buildings like i mean we don't in here at city hall some of us come in at 7 30 some come in at eight some you know we have staggered starts um staggered leave times but and and that entrance also allows uh mo mo movement into the unsecured part of the parking lot as well I'm yeah getting, i mean you don't I'm have to go south from into our the applicant gate. so they could go either way if it was really backed up um the main entrance to the building is in the L. Is that right. correct? Okay. In the south, well, it would be the north east corner of the the building. The well, yeah, the L shape. Yeah, right, right, right in the armpit of the L. Correct. Okay, uh, is that also an entrance on the north? Is it the north side at the bottom of the uh, drawing where the where the green space is? Is that also an entrance for the poor souls that park on the back side of the building that don't have to walk all the way around? I could leave the security to the building, uh, the, the actual doors. I mean, they're, they're, I can leave that up to Jared, but there there's doors on the back. Okay, as well. I'm, I'm, all I'm trying to determine is how much how much access or how much traffic there's going to be, both foot and and vehicular, on the side closest to the apartments. I mean. Yeah, I mean, there would be the people who park on the south side of the building will go into the doors on the south side right. of the building. Right, okay, okay. Um, the, so the, the number of parking places that will be created as a result of the ones that are lost and the ones that are picked up, uh, 
does that meet the city's requirements for the number of parking places for the number of square feet in the building for an yeah. office building? Yes, they have enough for the, the square footage of the building. They have a 10,000 square foot auditorium in there and there's a calculation like one, one part, one seat, one space for every three seats. Okay. You know, so that they would have enough to fill up the auditorium with almost 400 people. So it's not, so I guess the point I'm making is that it's not excessive. It's not excessive. Okay. We've learned a lesson on a few of those where we've allowed too many parking places that never no, get used. No, they, 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 um, the applicant has strenuously fought for every parking spot they okay. can get. Okay. <laughs> so it's what they need. Okay, that's fine. Um, just one, one final question, and that uh, deals with the, uh, the parking along that, that south edge mm -hmm. um, where the, the plantings are going to be. Is there enough... Uh, green space between the parking blocks or the curbs or whatever and the fence so that those um, evergreens there aren't going to get hit by bumpers for people pulling in their parking place. Is there, is there enough clearance there? Yes. Um, it, that, that line looks really thick. It's, I mean, that, that was just so you could see it, but there's 10 feet of, of, okay. of green space, which okay, is Okay, so between the edge of the, the curbing or whatever, wh whether it be parking blocks or curbing. It'll be curb. We, won't, we okay. don't do parking blocks Okay, anymore. between the curb then and, and the fence, the fence 10 feet. is 10 feet. Good, not a problem. Okay, gentlemen, do you have any other questions? And just for a point of uh, procedure, vote on Oops. the amendment first and then the, the major mod. I'm a fast learner, thanks. <laughs> Okay, so we, gentlemen, I need a motion then for the amendment. Mr. Chair, I would motion to approve PUD 98-9, Amendment 623, with four attached conditions. Okay. Mr. Chair, I'll second. I'm thankful I have a second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Anything else for the good of the order, gentlemen? Okay. Roll call. Mr. Meyer? Yes. Mr. Ayers? Yes. Mr. Self? Yes. Motion carries, 3-0. And we will, I will ask you all for a motion on the major mod. Ms. Chairman, motion to approve PUD 98-9, mod 623, uh, major mod with 18 attached conditions. Okay, I have a motion. Mr. Chair, I'll second. And I have a second. Read the roll. Mr. Ayers? Yes. Mr. Meyer? Yes. Mr. Self? Yes. Motion carries. 3-0. And we are fresh out of agenda items for tonight so uh, anything from staff that we need to know Are we all good no, just come okay back uh, then I will ask for a motion to adjourn Mr. Chair I would motion to adjourn the July meeting Mr. Chair I second and I have a second and we are at 630